Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. I can't believe I'm finally filming this video. I've tried to film this video like three times now and just something has gone wrong every single time. So let's fingers cross that this video is the one that goes live about this topic because it's something that I've been wanting to film um, for quite a number of weeks now. Um, it's something that I often get questions about from friends, family, Instagram, people that I meet on the street that I just talk, I don't know, everyone, just anyone that I know that I meet that I tell them I'm a house sitter, I get bombarded with so many questions and they're often the same questions. So I figured it was just easier if I just answered all the questions in one video because it's just, it's just easier, you know, you know. So obviously, as the title suggests, and as I've kind of already rolled into, this video is gonna be answering all your questions about house sitting. I've been a house sitter now for, I think about four months. Yeah, I'm gonna say four months. Um, if you haven't watched my last video, uh, definitely go check it out. It's all about how I quit my full-time job, I launched my own online business, I moved to a different city, and I started house sitting. So I am a full-time house sitter. I'm currently on my fifth house sit? I think I'm on my fifth house sit now. I've done quite a few. I don't even know anymore. Um, uh, and yeah, it's just all about it because a lot of people don't even know what house sitting is. So I thought I'd answer all your questions in one. So if you want to stick around and learn all about it, then keep on watching. So I'm going to start with the most obvious question and this one I get asked like all the time, believe it or not, um, is what is a house sitter? So a house sitter is someone that essentially, as the name suggests, uh, goes and sits for a house. It's like a babysitter, but for your house and your pets. Um, so essentially what a house sitter does is they'll go and look after someone's house while they're away for work or away for on holidays or whatever reason they can't be home um, for. A house sitter will go and look after their house and most often than not their pets as well. Um, most ha most homeowners that need a house sitter do own pets or maybe they have house plants that they need looking after, um, but primarily it is when they have pets. So one of the reasons for this, instead of putting your pet into say a kennel or you know, like a, um, a little holiday pet retreat, um, is that it's a lot more cost effective. Putting your pet away in like a pet retreat can be like anywhere from like $30 to $100 a day, um, depending on how like, you know, nice you want it to be. Um, and it also puts the pet in a bit of distress. Not a lot of pets cope um, being put in an environment that isn't there. So if your pet suffers from like anxiety or separation issues, um, having someone come into your house where the pet is comfortable living and it, it knows its own little areas and it's just, it's a lot, it's a lot better for the pet. It doesn't put any stress on them while their owner's away um, and it just gives their owner a little bit more comfort as well as well as saving money. So that's essentially what a house owner, home, house owner, <laughs> house sitter is. The next question I get asked all the time is how did you get into house sitting? Um, so I like most people didn't know house sitting was a thing. Um, I guess like you, I guess when people, you hear about it you're kind of like okay yeah that makes sense like people, people would do that. Um, I didn't think of it as an option until earlier this year before I moved. My cousin's now husband, his mum, I met at a at my cousin's uh, bridal lunch, and she was telling um, myself, my mum, that she was a house sitter, and I was like, that's kind of cool. Like, what, what do you mean? Like, you just travel around, get paid, like you live in other houses, um, and she's like, yeah, it's like really convenient. I just work from home, um, and at the time, I just thought it was really cool. I still didn't really think of it as a thing that I would ever do until my move to Melbourne came up, and I didn't know where in Melbourne I wanted to live, I didn't know if I could afford to live in Melbourne and so I thought that maybe I would try my hand at house sitting and that's sort of how I fell into it. The next one I get asked a lot is where do you find house sitting jobs? Everyone thinks that I just like house it for friends or I find them on Facebook or somewhere like that. Um, I'm at, it's actually a house sitting website so I guess it would be similar to online dating, I guess. I'm not really sure, I, I've never really been an online dater, but I presume that's what it's like. Um, you create like an online profile of yourself, you upload photos, um, an about section about yourself, what you do for work, um, your interests, hobbies, where you're living, where you want to house sit. You can even put a calendar up about your availability of when you're available to house sit. Um, and then homeowners can list their listings, so they can write, you know, what they can put photos up of their pets, their house, um, their requirements, the dates that they're away, and then you can contact each other um, if you think you're suitable for each other, um, and sort of go from there. So I'm on four house sitting websites at the moment. Um, two of them I found are far more better than the other ones. Um, Happy House Sitters is my favourite, followed by Mind a Home. Um, I'm also on Aussie House Sitters and there is another one that I can't remember the name of but I really rarely use that one. Um, I will leave plenty of links to all the house sitting websites in the, in the description box below. They're all Australian websites. I think the Aussie 
Aussie houses. I think they have like one in America as well. I'm not sure. Um, and essentially, you just have to pay a small fee, um, a yearly fee to be on it. It ranges from sixty to hundred dollars, depending on the time frame. It's only about a year. Um, and you can sit it for as many times. So it's actually quite affordable when you think about it um, because if you get one house sit, you've literally just paid that off. Like it's cheaper than, you know, by going to Airbnb or wherever else. So um, you do have to pay for it if you are a house sitter, homeowners, it's free. And that is where I find most of my house sits. The next one is what do you have to do? Um, pretty much what I would do in my normal day-to-day -day life. It is literally just like living um, anywhere else that, like, you know, in your own place. Um, you would just look after it like you would normally, or if you think of it as like staying in an Airbnb, but there's pets. So it would just be like staying in an Airbnb. You respect the property as you would your own, um, but then more than often not, there are pets there as well, which is awesome. So you just have to feed the pets. Um, if there are dogs, you might have to walk them once a day, twice a day. Uh, depends whatever their routine is. So you know, obviously some bigger dogs or um, more active dogs need walking twice a day. So you, the, the homeowner might request that you have to walk them twice a day. Uh, play with them, love them. If there are house plants, a lot of homeowners just ask if you don't mind what are the house plants. Aside from that, you just have to make be clean and just look after the house as if it's your own. Do you get paid? So no, I personally don't charge to house it. Um, I it's more of an agreement of like I get to live for free. I get free internet, Netflix, you know, Foxtel a lot of the time, um, aircon, whatever amenities and stuff I need. All of it is free. Um, in exchange, I don't pay rent, in exchange to look after the house and the pet. So I have heard of house owners that do charge to do it. A lot of um, like dog walkers, um, they will charge to house it a, a fee, but because it's something that I do quite regularly um, and I do it for longer periods of time, I don't charge for it. Um, also because I don't actually have anywhere else to live. Like I'm technically homeless, I live out of a car. Um, um, so yes, yeah, so I don't, I don't, I don't charge. A lot of other house owners on these websites don't charge. Oh, home, sorry, house owners don't charge either. You can charge if you want. You're just probably a little more limited on what you can find. Um, but it just comes down to personal preference as well. How long do you usually stay in one place for? So personally, I don't like to house sit less than two weeks. Um, purely because I do run my own business. Um, so I like to be a little bit more settled because. It is really disturbing to your routine if you're constantly packing all your stuff up, moving places, unpacking again. Um, it just like, it, it actually takes, a, you know, it could take a half a day to a day depending on where you're going and how much you have to clean and stuff. So I personally prefer to do minimum two weeks. At the moment, the current place that I'm sitting at the moment is for four weeks and the one after this is for six weeks, I think, which is awesome. That was the two longest I've done. I have done as short as four five days, which I recently did, that was more of a favor to um, a guy that I'd house for, house that for previously. I had done his for just over a week, um, and I wasn't gonna do this one because it was such a, it was really only four days, like four hundred days, um, because it was such a short period of time, I wasn't really gonna do it, but he had another house to fall out, and I absolutely loved the dogs that I was house sitting for him, and it's a nice part of the city, so I said, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to come and do it for you, but Personally, I don't normally do anything short than two weeks, but it is his personal preference. There are people that go away for as short as one day up to like three, four months. So um, most house sits that you will find are two to four weeks, um, but it's all, yeah, depends on what, what you're happy sitting for, really. Is house sitting safe? So this is something, like, a lot of people are like, do you feel safe? Like, I don't know, even like my mom and other people that, um, like friends and stuff are like, like what if something goes wrong? Like, how do you know they're not like, you know, they don't have cameras or they're not going to break in or like, you know, anything could happen. Um, I've always felt safe. Um, you have to think of it as, it's almost like, like I said, Airbnb. Like, it's no different to Airbnb. Um, you know, there could be like cameras or people could break into your Airbnb home. Like, you never really question that. So why would you, like, why question this? You just have to trust the homeowners. Um, and you normally, well, I know most of the time, and I've done this every time, is meet the homeowner before you say yes to doing the house sit. You'll go there, you'll meet them, make sure you feel comfortable with them, they feel comfortable with you, you're happy with the house, the location, um, everything else. You can ask them as many questions as you like, you can meet them numerous times. I have one house, my next house sit, because it's going to be for an American staffy. Um, I'm actually going to meet the homeowner nearly every week leading up to it, so I can get more acquainted with the dog and understand how um, the dog behaves. Um, just because they are renowned to be a little bit more 
um, they can be aggressive. He's an absolute sweetheart. I'm so excited to house at him. But just a precaution so that the house owner feels comfortable that I can handle him. Um, I get, to, I, you know, he's just asked if I can go over there and have a play day every now and then and walk the dogs, which I think is fine. Like, I'm so really happy with that. And that makes me feel more comfortable with him in the house getting to know the, the place as well. Um, but you, a lot of homeowners are actually more worried about you than you are of them. Um, a lot of homeowners, I think nearly every single place I've sat house at for so far have never done it before. So they're, they're just as new as you are. Um, they're quite nervous. Obviously they're entrusting you to look after their baby. Um, they're, you know, they're pets of their babies. So it's for them that it's quite nerve wracking because they're letting a stranger into the house looking after their baby so you have to kind of you know, like understand that they're probably more worried than you are um but you just have to reassure them that you know you're going to look after their, their, their fur baby as if it were your own so i it's 100 well i wouldn't say it's 100 safe but i say it's fairly safe you just have to do your safety precautions like you would in anything in life i don't think you should go through life being worried about you know worried about doing anything like this because life is too short anyway so if you're worried it's probably not for you so what happens when you have nowhere to go? I've been pretty fortunate that my brother and his partner actually live in Melbourne. Um, they have a spare bedroom, so when I don't have anywhere to house it, I go and stay with them. I just rent their spare room off them. Um, but in saying that, I pretty much, when I first moved down, there was one, one day or two days, one night? I think it was only one night in the end. Um, that I stayed with them, that I had a house sit straight away for over a week, went back to their place for I think three nights, and then I was back-to-back -back house sitting for three, I had three back-to-back -back house sits. Um, it is super easy to find house sits. Like I said, I'm on four websites, and every day I probably get about five to ten new homeowner listings just in Melbourne, like in the area that I specify that I want to house sit, listed a day. So there is never a shortage of house sits, like if you want. Um, you just can't be super picky. So it, the more picky you are, like if you're like, I only want to house sit the south area of this particular area in a 10 kilometer radius, um, then you're going to be more limited. But if you're really open to like where, where you house sit, you won't have a problem. You can get back to back ones. And if you don't, like maybe then there's a chance to get an Airbnb or stay with a friend for a night or two. But um, it's actually pretty easy to get them and you probably won't be, be without anywhere to stay for very long. Have you had any bad experiences? I don't think so actually no okay there was one it was kind of a bad experience it was more frustrating than anything um so this one it was my third house that I think no second my second house that I think it was yeah um I was gonna be house sitting these two dogs and the lady had told me when I went over to see her that she would leave the key to the house um in the back shed so I would just have to go through the back gate go into the shed and the key was hidden in like a toolbox and I was like, no worries, that's fine. So um, that morning she'd flown to Bali, so I also had no contact with her either because she was still on her flight to Bali. Um, and I had gotten home, like I'd gone to work that day, got into this house sit, um, gone to go over the back gate and the back gate's padlock shut. And I was like, okay, cool. What do I do now? Because I can't contact her because she's still on a plane. So after a few minutes of debating what to do, I hoisted my work skirt up, luckily I was wearing sneakers this day, not heels, <clears throat> managed to scale this two meter fence to get over the fence, um, got over the fence, found the gate, the gate was also padlocked shut, and I was like, awesome, I can't get the key now, what, what the hell do I do, it's like 4 o'clock in the afternoon, um, so I managed to find the dogs, and then I walked around the back of the house, luckily she left the back door open so the dogs go inside and out, so I managed to get into the house, um, but then I was like, well, I can't just jump the fence every time I need to get to the house for the next three weeks. Like, what am I going to do? So I had to sort of, like, look around the house, try and find keys. I found some keys eventually, luckily. They weren't the keys for the front door, but I worked out there with the keys for the padlocks, which, so I unlocked the padlocks, and then I managed to get into the house. Um, so that was really frustrating. It wasn't her fault. It was a miscommunication between her and her partner. Um, but I eventually found them. It was just a really annoying time. And I actually managed to lock myself out of that same house, like, literally a week later. It was so embarrassing because the doors on a lot of, the, on a lot of Melbourne homes um, are, like, the bolt kind of doors where, like, if they slam shut behind you, you can't get back in without a key. I'd stepped outside in my pyjamas to grab a Domino's pizza because a guy couldn't walk to my front door and the door slammed shut and I locked myself out and the back door was locked at this point in time as well. And I had to call her son to come drive half an hour across the city 
to open the door with me because he had a spare key, luckily. And luckily I had his phone number as well. It was so embarrassing. So it we both kind of fucked up, which it, yeah, it kind of worked out because we both had made, you know, had that, you know, issues with the keys. But that's probably really the only bad experience I've had so far. Oh, and the next house sit, I had a cat pee in my suitcase. Yeah, that was kind of annoying, but hey, like, you can't sort of cat pee in a suitcase, and I just come from dogs, so, like, what, what is a cat going to do? <laughs> do you have any tips for anyone thinking of house-sitting? Um, I think we should, I would just say go for it. Like, honestly, it is so much fun. Um, it definitely has its ups and downs. If you're someone who doesn't mind jumping around from house to house, if you're, you can live a very minimal life with little belongings, um, you love animals, um, you work for yourself or you work part time, then I think go for it. You, it's, you save a lot of money um, and it's a really great way to um, experience different areas of the city or being able to live in different houses that you probably never could afford. I've stayed in places that I know for a fact that I could not afford the rent in. Um, and they're just really nice and it's nice to be able to look after a pet but then not have that responsibility of having it your whole life so if you are someone who travels a lot um or you just work a lot like it's a really good compromise for that as well so i think if it's like if it sounds like it's up your alley go for it just make sure that you get a lot of references um from friends or family or people that you've housed that for before before um and really good photos and just be yourself and then homeowners will love you so if i've missed any questions in this q a at all please drop me a comment below because i might film a part two video if i have enough um, and make sure you guys follow me on instagram if you aren't already this is at miss courtney day um, if you want to stay up to date with all my house sit adventures and see what I'm getting up to. But I am going to try and do some more vlogs. I would really like to do kind of like a day in the life house sit vlog and show you guys what I actually do when I house sit. Um, but if you guys want anything else, let me know and I'll catch you guys in my next video. Bye!